some of these ancient sites that are underground in Turkey and whatnot, we find that they were built for the specific purpose of getting through a cataclysm. It's called Ad the Atlantic Ocean for a reason, I think. Was it all just Atlantis or was it all just the previous Earth civilization? There's no Lemuria necessarily, but there are ancient civilizations that exactly. were swallowed by the ocean. Where did all of this knowledge go that the Egyptians had? I mean, on one of the planets in Vega, there was a civilization. And this is what we've remote viewed. There was a culture that existed there for a while and developed that, that planet. It was, in the, it was in the Goldilocks zone. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Metaphysical Podcast. We've done two episodes on occultist James Churchward and Helena Blavatsky, who popularized concepts of lost continents from the ancient past once being in our oceans. But even though they were the ones to spread these ideas in modern times, which became incorporated into occult religions like theosophy, the concept didn't actually originate with either of them. The lands of Lemuria, which was claimed to be in the Indian Ocean, and Mu, which was in the Pacific, might just have been recorded by older and older groups like the Maya, Egyptians, and more. And stories about Lemuria and Mu's deeper histories and their inhabitants got extremely interesting when we really started looking into it. And I mean, that's why we created the Metaphysical Podcast in the first place, to talk about John Vivanco's remote viewing data on strange locations and events, and investigative research from me, Rob Counts, about history. So join us today for a show that's out of this world. Yeah, and listen up. If you're listening to the Metaphysical Podcast or you're watching us on a video platform, please leave us a five-star review and rating. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help us reach a lot more people. Make sure you also like and subscribe wherever you're listening. How you doing, John? Good. This is like, this is, when we get into Lemuria and we get into this stuff, this is just, this is the stuff that makes me really excited, especially like in contrast with the last episodes that we did uh, yeah. with Lavatsky and, and Church Warden stuff. Like, like, honestly, I do think that some of the information that Blavatsky, for instance, was putting out was not necessarily channing, channeling, but it was like under the surface, real information on exposing some of this stuff. Yeah. I when mean, it comes to ancient civilizations, that is. Yeah. And, you know, my best understanding is like, you know, we have this, we, we brought up the Library of Alexandria and, and I think one of our past episodes here and it's um, with Church Ward, I think. But let's say the Library of Alexandria, you know, that information was somehow preserved. We've got, right. you know, the, Mas the, the Masonic Secret Society, the Rosicrucians who are passing down a lot of this hidden information that could have come from this library. And it's all secret. And then all of a sudden, Blavatsky comes out under the veil of channeling and brings this information forward. And here we've got some of it released out here. Uh, in some of these more esoteric communities where we can now begin to have this discussion today, right? And and it's, it's right. it is fascinating because what happened before the flood? What what did the world look like? Everybody wants to know that, you know. I mean, even today, like mainstream is well, I think mainstream pretty much is now understanding that there was an ancient flood cataclysm. They usually put it in only in certain areas. And I think it took a long time for this acceptance to grow because there was such a huge backlash to catastrophism early in the 1900s because of the biblical reference. Noah's flood, and that's not scientific, so we have to just get rid of the whole idea of catastrophism. I don't understand how that's considered not scientific when there's been plenty of evidence that the flood occurred. How is that possible? Is it, is you it know, like, I mean, it or? <laughs> well, that, but, but see, that's the thing. It's like, it's like taking data and then just looking at specific locations and say, well, the, a flood did occur here. It wasn't a worldwide flood. So a lot of them go down that path when it comes to it, but, <sighs> but okay. you know, plenty of evidence that the, the planet goes through catastrophic changes every 12,000 ish years or so. So that exists. And when you get to the ancient text documents, Bible and whatnot, they are referencing historic events 
but it's through like the telephone game in a sense as well, right? You know, where it's changes every time it's repeated in a sense. It, there's not just some type of evidence of Lemuria in, in, in a continent like Mu, but there are others too. Like, have you ever heard of Zelandia? Z Zelandia, no. Yeah. What's Zelandia? So Zelandia is basically where New Zealand, like what New Zealand now rests on is this entire area next to Australia that was supposedly the content of Zelandia. And, um, wow. you know, these are very unique con continents, really. When you talk about Australia, I mean, kangaroos, koalas, like, you know, New Zealand, Australia, Tasmania, even they, they just seem like lands out of time. They, no, they yeah. have characteristic from a very ancient time that is is bizarre even on our planet, you know, and um, you know that. So it, it's said that that this lost continent was basically ninety five percent submerged, and and that's how we have just this. And then it goes up to New Caledonia up there. Uh, yeah, there's a jack kangaroo. That's such a strange. Animal. It's like that is definitely not like. Where is that from, really? Yeah, I know. There are a lot of ideas. A lot of people talk about how Australia was originally, I mean, this is originally terraformed by the Pleiadians, right? So this is like, you get into psychic information. I was going to say, they, so this is channel two, right? I, you know, it's, what's, yeah, what's the difference between the cha channeled and psychic? There's a difference between that. So I think this is mm. some people who are psychics talk about Australia being originally terraformed by Pleiadians, and they brought these types of species to that planet. Uh, on the on, or I mean to that area, to that location. Area, yeah. yeah. And so what I find kind of interesting actually is is that when we remote view some. When we remote view animals like origination point or we remote view seeds or plants in general, we always do get that they came from somewhere else before they were on this planet. So who knows? There might be something to that. Yeah, that's actually when you think about think about uh, Earth humans wanting to terraform Mars. I mean, how many civilizations out there move to other planets and terraform them? We even saw that with uh, the Vega so, you know, the star Vega has a solar system similar to ours in that they have an asteroid belt. And, and on, on one of the planets in Vega, there was a civilization. And this is what we've remote viewed. And there was a culture that existed there for a while and developed that, that planet. It was, in the, it was in the Goldilocks zone, really, of being able to thrive. And there was another planet closer to that sun, the Vega sun, that another species came in to start to terraform. And so they, they took that planet and started to turn it in the way they wanted. And basically, you know, when you get to these like higher class civilizations type, maybe type two or, or whatnot, well, there's this ability to be able to do stuff like that. And I think humans in general are, are on the verge of doing that, at least in ideas. So I can absolutely believe that this planet, portions of it were terraformed by those from other locations around the universe. Yeah, I mean, could it really be that the billions of years this planet was in existence, n nothing or no one had visited it or had done anything yeah. on it? It was just, you know, we were monkeys and we evolved into these, which, you know, that's a whole rabbit hole itself. But I mean, we'd be silly to think that, um, you know, there's no evidence of previous civilizations tampering with this earth. <laughs> well, okay. Oddly enough. I mean, this is like a discussion that I had uh, when I was talking to Michael Sala, Dr. Michael Sala, and yeah. we we're talking about, um, I was talking about, he was brought up the giants of the past on earth. And, and, and I was talking about how, when we, he already ha had this idea in his head. And I confirmed his idea because when we had originally remote viewed the origination point of the giant species who was on this planet in the past, the origination point was literally genetic manipulation by an alien species. In fact, it was it was like not the, the ones that necessarily messed with humans, but a different race of beings that that created this race of giants on this planet. And so 
that's just like within the last, you know, 12, beyond 12,000 years. I mean, what was here before? Because this planet has been around for a, quite a long time. So you would have had a lot of different species coming and going. In fact, you know, when we remote view other planets that have civilizations, we find that, that, that many of these civilizations are not isolated. They interact and different species come in and out from different locations in the universe. It's just a thing. That's just the way it is because they, it's how they live. It's how they understand the universe they live in. But for whatever reason, we're like put in this tiny box here and, and are not meant to think outside of that box. And when we do, we're ridiculed. Hmm. So, yeah. And anyway, what and are we talking about? <laughs> Lemuria. Lemuria. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maria. But when you were showing Zealandia, I think it's interesting because if you drop the sea levels down, when all that water was locked up in the ice caps, like 12,000 ish years ago, that would have been exposed. And also Australia connected all the way to Papua New Guinea. It was land. It was all you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of miles, maybe even thousands of land that goes all the way to Papua New Guinea. It's all one big island, basically. There you go. I think if you drop it to like 120 meters, 120 meters is like um, about 400 feet or so lower sea level, which is the estimated sea level around 12,000 years ago. So you got a lot of extra land there. Who knows what would show up in the middle of the ocean too. I was going to say like, are this is their best understanding of what would happen. And it doesn't take into right. account tectonic plates mm -hmm. having moved and or shifted, uh, you know, certain planes up and down within, right. within this area. So, I mean, look at, look at like uh, Great Britain, look at all that land around Great Britain. So, Oh, here's a good reference point. So when you look at Florida in the United States, right to the west into the Gulf, you've got that extra land. That's right. about a hundred miles. Okay, so that little extra land going directly west from Florida into the Gulf is a hundred miles. So you can kind of get a guesstimation when you look at other areas of land there, uh, like in Australia or or around Great Britain, that you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of miles of extra land all over the place. And where do people build? They build on the coast. On um, the coast all the time. Yeah. yeah. And so it's, and what's funny about that is if we were going to be looking for artifacts, wouldn't we look, wouldn't we look in these places? But the concept isn't even accepted by mainstream. Well, on the surface anyway. And so, you know, what, what work could be done isn't. And, you know, this, this comes down, this comes back to, uh, what's so interesting I find about Lemuria, Lemuria here, which is they have in their ancient um, texts this idea of a place called Kumari Kundam, Kandam, Kumari Kandam, which is a, a mythical continent believed to be lost with an ancient Tamil uh, civilization supposedly located south of present day India in the Indian Ocean. And if Lemuria is real that is supposedly connecting to Madagascar and then down into Australia as well. A big landmass there, uh, right here, Kamari, uh, Kandem. And this would then give rise to the belief that the reason why lemurs are only in these places that, that this continent touches is because there used to be a connection here. Right. Right. Because fossils were found in all these other locations. So it's like that was the zoologist's idea in the, I think, late 1800s. Yeah. Um, he, what was his yeah. name? The zoologist's name. Slater. He was a lawyer slash zoologist named Philip Sclater. Sclater. British right. lawyer and zoologist. And he created he had a paper titled Mammals of Madagascar. And so he found the lemur fossils extremely abundant in India and Madagascar, but not at all in Africa or the Middle East, right? In India and Mad Madagascar would then have to be connected by land in the distant past. Right. So this idea was 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 tossed around back then. And I think even in, in the general science quarters of geology and whatnot, you know, they were like, hmm, probably like, could this be? Um, other people took this idea, too. I think it was a very exciting idea. 
uh, for a lot of people in general, because it was like, I think they also related it to this is where the beginning of humankind uh, was created. And this is why we don't find any fossils that go from ape to human, right? There's nothing in between. So yeah, Helena and Helena Blavatsky called these things root races, right? In her works, who knows where that came from, but that there were these sort of root races that had appeared before humans. Some of these, now I heard some strange, very strange accounts of these Lemurian people where they had two eyes in the front and one eye in the back of their heads and they had four arms. And this was, this yeah. was how they were described. Yeah, there's like a lot of descriptions of them that are just totally different from each other and very weird. Like they even had like a third eyeball as well. So <clears throat> who the heck knows? I mean, this is the OK, so this is the whole thing about. Um, I think the question really comes to ancient civilizations that were swallowed by the ocean. Now, like when you get to the idea of Lemuria, there was not there was no Lemuria necessarily. It was like the name is not what it was. I mean, this is really just coming off of what this scientist proposed that that basically a new theory showed up in the 1960s that that destroyed his, which was, you know, plate tectonics and from Gondwana the whole earth being one continent and breaking apart and spreading. Oh, yeah. Pangea. And Pangea. That's it. Pangea. And so, so that, that took over the thought, but up until that point, a lot of people were playing with that idea. Not anymore. Um, plate tectonics is what it's about, but you got to ask yourself also what, how, I mean, there are other ideas too, like expanding earth theory where the earth is expanding like if you had a continent somewhere and the earth is expanding, how is that going to fall into the ocean eventually? How is how are continents going to be disrupted? And we're talking geologic time. This happens over a very long period of time. There's no Lemuria necessarily, but there are ancient civilizations that exactly. were swallowed by the ocean. Call them whatever you want. Right. 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 And 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 this idea of the Lemurians civilization being destroyed yeah absolutely for sure that happens a lot <laughs> well what's strange too john is i f okay you've got this whole theory of the continent of mu which is in the pacific ocean stretching up above hawaii down to you know easter island um you know Peloponnesian, um you know islands and stuff like that uh, and then you've got you've got L Lemuria, which, you know, we're talking about in the Indian Ocean over there. And then you've got Atlantis, which was somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean or or the entire Atlantic Ocean. We don't know. Why is it called the Atlantic Ocean? Right. I mean, it's called Ad the Atlantic Ocean for a reason, I think. Was it all just Atlantis or was it all just the previous Earth civilization? Call it whatever you want. And this is just right. the this was the chemical makeup that we had. And, um, you know, it, it, some of it stayed, some of it went based off of different factors. Some of it could have been plate tectonics. Some of it could have been flooding, um, you know, but well, what, I guess one of the ideas though, was that like, like there was a continent, like this is how people try to explain Mu as being in the Pacific ocean, massive continent, the size of Australia in the Pacific ocean. And they explain it from the standpoint of, it was kind of a floating island where, where, and we see these things arise and disappear. Like when you talk about the Devil's Sea and we had that show on the Devil's Sea, some of the reports were that islands would appear and disappear. So suppose there was like a floating island in the Pacific at one point. And one of the ideas is that it was, it was all catacombed um, with volcanic gases static stationary for a while and then during one shift of the earth it just completely broke apart exploded flooded out which is a lot of the stories that we do get you know yeah a lot of the stories that that i was i was coming across were that over a really long extended period of time the continent of mu broke up into separate islands and then basically were lost to time you know over an extended period 
you know, so it wasn't like it just happened overnight. This happened over a long period of time of it right. basically disappearing into the ocean, uh, you know, into nowhere. Um, yeah. So, you know, what is it true? I mean, what w- was L- Lemuria real and what ha- what actually happened? I mean, well, I think. Well, so so Mu and Lemuria are interchangeable, right? And uh, Mu comes from what? Um, church word, right? Originally, yeah, church, Lemuria yeah. comes from Blavatsky. And well, uh, yes, well, they, they appropriated it, but from earlier right, scientists it. that, you know, that people were talking about these things earlier than them. Yeah. One thing I do find interesting is that church word would, would refer to Mu as motherland Mu. Which, which like literally goes into n- like Nazi idea of the motherland, mm. how they called Germany the motherland and how they were also like the Nazis were looking for Atlantis and Mu as well. So it's really fascinating, like governments have been looking for this and trying to understand it as well because of the ancient documentation on these places. And I don't think that um, this stuff is necessarily, they don't necessarily want this to go into public acceptance ultimately. But I do think that we've had many civilizations, islands that have come and gone with different types of cultures, different types of things happening. Yeah, we had uh, different accounts here of the the humans that took up, um, you know, were living on these continents. Yeah. Uh, Egg laying lemurs with eyes in the back of their heads. Now it's unclear whether there were when they say lemurs, we're talking about Lemurian people or not. You know, so <clears throat> they were and- androgynous. Is that what it's called? So like they were, they were actually leg laying and dig laying. They weren't man or woman. They didn't even know about sex and they discovered sex, which was their downfall. Their continent was destroyed, leaving only the remnants that we know on Easter Island in Australia. Eastern Island. Yeah, this is that here, this little excerpt here. Um, Easter where, Island where did has, this come from? Though? Is this, where did, from, is this, this from, from the, the secret doctrine? doctrine? Yeah, man. <laughs> it's wild. All right. Yeah, I mean, this is why I think Hitler was so fascinated with all of this. It's like it's this lead, this gigantic lead he has on where some of this stuff. We've also got we've talked about this in previous episodes where, you know, there's this bridge between India and Sri Lanka, where I think it was Lord Rama created this bridge. Um, And this is been proven over time that that bridge is there. And you have the Indian like Indian archaeologists going into the ocean down there and finding megalithic structures in the ocean that could only lead us to believe that there was some highly advanced civilization down there. I mean, we're talking about massive rocks. I mean, honestly, they're so big. It, it's like, it's, it, it's gigantic. Like we're, we're talking like, is it, was it a giant race? I don't even know. Right. You know? Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's the thing too, is that, there have been remnants found um, along the coasts of some of these areas, like when you get to um, Japanese islands down down south near Taiwan, uh, you have these structures under the water there. And, you know, at the very least, when you look back at, at a 400 foot water drop of the oceans, those things were in existence on the coasts. So, and, and the chains of islands were connected. And so the funny thing is, it's like, you don't need to actually um, claim that there was an Atlantis or a Lemuria or a Mu. You don't have to even go into that. Like those words themselves, those concepts just bring up derision from the mainstream. And all you have to do is look at what has been found under the water. That's really all it comes down to. And then go that path, right? Not trying to figure out the location of Atlantis because no matter what, you're not going to find a big marquee over a little like dilapidated, like uh, ruined thing under the ocean that says Atlantis, right? So nobody is ever going to truly know where it was. Right. And it doesn't actually matter 
because you have all this stuff showing up in general, you know, like there's an island chain in the Atlantic o Ocean that at least with only a 400 foot ocean level drop, that would have been exposed. And that is probably where Atlantis was, most likely, because it's well, where, just outside of the this? gates of Hercules. Yeah, mid Atlantic. Where, where, mid, be the mid Atlantic. Like, yeah. Right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Outside of the gates of Hercules, where uh, um, Plato had said it it existed. That's so this just, reshot structure that, that keeps getting brought up on every episode of Joe Rogan. <laughs> the, well, the reshot structure is the thing in Sahara. In the Sahara Desert, right? Okay. Yeah, but and, but it's and, the circular formation that Plato yeah. described. So so this is in Sahara. This isn't what you're referring to. Not what I'm referring to. The the reshot structure. We've looked at that. It's not got anything to do with Atlantis. Nothing to do with it. It's a volcano, basically. It's a different type of volcano. There's wow gases and magma. We're pushing up in these rings, and in fact, this thing is way 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 too huge to according to what plato talked about to be the atlantis right so and, and what we've seen is throughout history at this location it's been mined a lot of like uh ancient societies would go and mine it they would set up shop here a lot of slaves used to mine this area and stuff like that um, but nothing ever related to atlantis there no civilization there but yeah that's supposed to be the shape of atlantis though right yeah, this strange circular, I mean, according to what Plato described, limited information to begin with. And he would tell you that because, you know, he was finding things and he was trying to find things historically and retell them. Right. You know, that came from Solon and it, who who was a Greek senator or something who went to Egypt because the Egyptians were more or less known as the history keepers. And they had very detailed accounts of history way beyond what the Greeks understood. And so Solon went to Egypt to get an understanding of very deep history. And so that's when he brought back the story of Atlantis uh, to the Greeks. Where did all of this knowledge go that the Egyptians had? I mean, <laughs> you know, um, honest question. Yeah, here, where did like, it go? Yeah, I know it yeah. is. It's a good question. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's just somebody's got to have it. <laughs> it can't just have been lost in history like there. I just I have, a, I have a really hard time believing that. Right. So um, you've looked into Lemuria, you and your, your team, I, I assume, and uh, or ancient civilization down here. And what would, can you describe to me what it was like? What did you guys see or experience when you guys were well, remote? Oh. So it's like, okay, it's really difficult. We don't task, we can't task remote viewers off of channeled information for one. Of course. Right? So a bag of cats. That just doesn't happen. Um, we task based off of knowns as much as we can task remote viewers based off of things that are known, whether it is a, like a, a physical story or it is a photograph, or it is something that is found, et cetera, et cetera. So with Atlantis, for, we can't task on Lemuria, the idea of Lemuria. Um, we can task off on Atlantis, though, because there's supposed historical documentation on it. And, and what I think, you know, based off of remote viewing Atlantis, is that, that what, we've, what we've got here is, is a culture, a civilization, that existed in those areas where you had land that's no longer there, ultimately. They were island nations. There were a lot of them, but it wasn't just Atlantis. This stuff, I do believe, like the ancient civilizations, the ancient cultures are probably a lot like what um, uh, Church Ward said, talked about, as well as Le, Le, what, what, God, what was his name? Le Plongeon. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. That Thank was a, you. That was a really good take on that <laughs> last episode. <laughs> I think it, it it is very much what they say might not be exactly, but that Atlantis and those civilizations, whatever you want to call them, makes no difference in the world. Those civilizations collapsed; they were destroyed, and these beings, the people that were there, moved off of those islands as much as they could 
they began to form as much as they could after the cataclysm happened, different civilizations, new civilizations, mm -hmm. Egypt, um, the Mayans, et cetera, et cetera. But I do also think that these ancient civilizations, like the pyramids, for instance, were part of that, the Atlantean civilization, the structures in Chichen Itza, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of those were part of that civilization. They were appropriated by the people that came later. Exactly. They were appropriated. The, the, the buildings that were still standing after the cataclysm, yeah, though they appropriated them, you know? So now and we've so got... Now Right. We've got a historical situation where you've got these Egyptians traveling through the desert and stumble upon megalithic structures. And they're like, let's set up the city here. Right, right, right. But, you know, here's the other crazy thing. Um, did you ever watch that movie Time Trap? It was. I've watched the movie Time movie. Cop with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Not that I one. I've, time, no. I've seen Parrot Trap. Not Parent Trap. Time trap, not time bandits either like that. <laughs> <laughs> What's that time trap? Okay. So it was like, it's like a B movie, but, um, yeah. um, beef Supreme from idiocracy is in it. If you ever watch idiocracy beef Supreme, mm. <laughs> anyway, time trap was an interesting movie because it was all about a time dilation that occurred in a cave, a time dilation, right? And it made me wonder if if pyramids, in part, help to create a time dilation where where time slows down when you're inside of it, and time speeds up, appears to speed up when you're out when 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 you're looking from outside of it. So this movie kind of like pushed that concept forward. And I've always wondered, or lately I've I've been really wondering a lot is. Do pyramids, can pyramids create a time dilation to help people move faster through cataclysms, cataclysmic events? The way you're thinking about this is fascinating. Right. So it makes me wonder if they can do that, if they do that, because that this gets, gets into the mystery spot thing as well. But if you watch Time Trap, I think it's, it's a very, even though they're not dealing with a pyramid, they're dealing with a cave. I think it's a very well represented concept right there really, really well represented concept on a time dilation. So that always made me wonder. And I like wonder if if a lot of these people just ended up in the pyramids or in or they these were built specifically to get through the cataclysm because because when we get to uh, some of these ancient sites that are underground in Turkey and whatnot, um, we find that they were built for the specific purpose of getting through a cataclysm. And, and some of the data, interestingly, that we do have around the pyramids is that an aspect of them was focused on for the purpose of getting through a cataclysm. And it couldn't be because of time dilation. That's really, really interesting. And also the size of the pyramid. Now, pyramids alter or there's different kinds of energy that that pyramids kind of alter. Right. We're, we're talking about a mix of electromagnetics, um, we call it orgone, chi energy, whatever it is, even at a small size, creating one of these pyramid shapes end up doing something to you if you're meditating. Imagine. Oh, yeah. So now we're talking about a massive structure whose effect could be greater and that is a very interesting concept because when, when you're talking about time dilation, time is affected by gravity. It's affected by electromagnetics. And now you're actually making a case for a very possible thing. I know we need to have, we need to like get a piece of land, have the, the metaphysical land that we purchase and put a metaphysical pyramid on it where we run experiments, you know, <laughs> We, we do need to do Ethical that. Ones. Rob's actually getting younger in this pyramid. <laughs> I hope so. we got too much gray going on now, man. Now, what's what's super interesting also about what you said is when we start pulling from some of these things Helena Blavatsky's talking about and or um, uh, what's this fellow's name? No. Yeah, Church Ward. Sorry. And you've got H.P. Lovecraft who seems to be taking his information from real people doing work in the Middle East and, and, and church ward and some of these other guys, right. this is HP Lovecraft. Actually, he looks quite like a disturbed individual. Um, 
no offense, uh, but when you look at pictures of him and uh, was it the poet uh, Edgar Allan Poe, it, you know, and then I'm like, man, both of these guys lived like where, like right near where I grew up. What kind of energy is over there? <laughs> it's like yeah. these people yeah. to, you know, appear and create weird stories. And then Lizzie Borden's over there, you know, chopping people down. Right. UFOs are picking people up and, and, and Bigfoot's got a pot belly. I mean, you know, the whole thing's right. over there in the Bridgewater Triangle. But, um, but you, you know, the, it's very interesting how these, these stories like uh, are are getting kind of uh, rolled out from from some of these people that are bringing forward these concepts of Lemuria and stuff like that. Uh, Lindsay was telling me about a story of of a fictional book that was written where underneath Stonehenge there was a UFO, and the UFO is why Stonehenge was built above it. And we've got so many fictional accounts of these things, and and I think the reason why these these books do well is because the these I, these things are probable. I mean, look, when you looked into what was going on in the mystery spot over in California, you told me you found something underneath creating the right. anomaly. What was it? Right, which which could be a pyramid. It's some kind of very large shape, pointy shape, that most likely is some type of pyramid. Or it could be anything. It could be a craft. It could be it could anything. Be something right. that's creating this strange anomaly. And that's not the only place around the world where we have some of these strange anomalies. It's right? not the only place. I mean, up in Alaska, there's supposedly a, the Black Pyramid or whatever that's under the ground. And when you go into Google Earth and stuff, you find that the the map, the land, the satellite view is, is blurred out. They blur, they blur it out. You find that in Antarctica as well. That bothers me so much. I know. It's like, <laughs> just show us what's there, man. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and 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 India, India too is just such a. It's such an old area. Like, there's so much. Like, there's so much, and people are so curious about how we all ended up where we ended up, right? Like, right. Well, and, and and mainstream really really has has um mm -hmm. discounted the view of cultural diffusionism but but what, what is it, cultural diffusion diffusionism John? it's it's or cultures that? mixing with other cultures and spreading symbols ideas and their culture to other cultures so that i think that there was cultural diffusionism that was happening all these cultures were mixing there was one culture in a sense this is what we've seen with viewing like there was one culture for the most part when you get back to atlantis before the cataclysm and then you have this cataclysm happen. These these subjects, the beings that were living there, had had perished or moved to safer areas where they tried to rebuild civilization. And they brought some of the culture and ideas with them. And this is why you see the swastika in Tibet. You see it across Asian cultures. You Greece. see it in Africa. You see it with the Hopi Indians in the United States. You see it all over the place. You see it in ancient in ancient Christian churches. And Greece. Sometimes have them. And Greece, yeah. right, yeah. So, <clears throat> so I think this, when you get to that idea, cultural diffusionism, I think these are the aspects of it. I think a lot of these in the pyramids as well. The, 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 you've got the stepped pyramids, even in the, in the America, in America itself, um, there were rudimentary uh, step uh, pyramids trying to be built at a certain point in history. So I think that 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 is what you're looking at is the cultural diffusionism. I really kind of just really wish I had the Chrono visor to look at some of these ancient civilizations and see what was going on sometimes. There's right. got to be a way. I think you and I need to figure this out. There's got to be a way for us to task on certain specific questions that could get us closer to understanding these ancient civilizations, right? You, you said this. It's like hard to view channeled information, right? But we've got Edgar Casey here who's talking about Lemuria, Lemuria too. And he, he's and tapping he, into the ancient civilization. That's it, right? That's what he's doing, that it existed. And he talks about, yeah, aspects of it, what it did. Yeah, we can't task on that. So what happens with remote viewing is that we do the initial thing. We task on the initial thing. And then if we get things that line up with what others have said, then, okay, that's cool. That is, that is interesting. It's, it's sort of this verification. But oftentimes we don't get a lot of verification off of it, even though 
it's very similar. It's very similar to what they said. So as far as Atlantis goes and that ancient culture, it was a culture that was at least in the beginning, higher spiritual based, higher spiritual ideologies, as well as they had capability technology to, to do a lot of genetic engineering. And they did do a lot of genetic engineering and they did have things that were, um, uh, what we would consider like magical, like, like things that I wouldn't say UFOs, that type of thing, but something that was a transportation like device that would sort of hover on magnets and things like that. Right. They didn't necessarily have like alien type technology that we saw. That was what we think of these days as alien technology, but it was very similar to that. But at the same time, it had this aspect to it that was very archaic from our perspective. Um, big stone buildings. Um, there, It seemed to be that a lot of the stuff that they constructed was stone-based as opposed to metal and wood-based. Um, they utilized pyramids quite a bit for energy as well as for spiritual purposes. And that's that big translation point to our modern ancient cultures. Um, uh, what do we also see? We, one of the, the big thing that we do see a lot of is literally their genetic engineering type stuff hmm. where you have the minotaur type creatures, you have mermaids, you have um, beings that were created that shouldn't have been created, probably a lot like what we're doing today. Um, and you know, interestingly enough, what we see is that that culture was destroyed, was destroyed by something outside of themselves. And, you know, a lot, people talk about, well, they were in a war between Lemurians and Atlanteans. I don't know. We didn't see any of that. We literally saw that it was the culture doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And there was a higher power in a sense. I mean, this just gets into that whole realm of being punished by a God or God, right? Which is a hard place for people to go mentally, but that's what we've seen. I was reporting remote viewing data is that there was yeah, a, well, hu human beings were knuckleheads and they right. were screwing with things they shouldn't have been. And it was like, you're out of line and, and let's, let's go ahead and fix that. Right. I don't. Right. Yeah. And there was a point in time where in a sense, this other, spiritual energy came in that some people perceived and some didn't spiritual energy came in and basically said, if you don't turn inward and toward yourself at this point in time and stop, stop destroying or doing the negative things that you're doing, then your civilization is going to go away. So what's so interesting about what you just said right there with your data is that we, we seem to have some confirmation of that from the channeling that Edgar Casey did, because he was basically saying that the Atlanteans to pay the price for the things that they were doing, they, right. they went underground into the, into the earth to, to live. And they're no longer, that's their penance. They're no longer allowed to come out from that situation and they're paying the price for what they did. Right. Whereas according to some results, the Lemurians were much more focused on a spiritual type of ascension and that they ended up, well, maybe succeeding or not with that. I, I don't really know. Uh, but it is interesting. It's an interesting idea, right? That the Lemurians ascended and the Atlanteans kind of, you know, stayed on, went and stayed underground. Right. Well, there, I mean, there's a whole thing about that. Like when you get Hitler, to like, who, that was who Hitler was looking for, man. He, he was, was looking for the Aryans. He was looking exactly. for uh, the, the the previous humans to impart supernormal abilities to him so that he could do his thing, you know? Exactly. Exactly. It's exactly right. And, and, and I mean, look at the story of the Hopi, for instance, the Hopi Indians. I mean, they said that they came out of the third world into the fourth world in a hole from a hole in Colorado. The fourth world is now this, right? So that's their story. The earth gave birth to them, but they've gone. That's the third time they've done it. So, so the Hopi natives say that very soon they're going to have to go back into the hole to re be reborn again into the next world. And, and what I think is that the Hopi are talking about how they had to go underground to survive a cataclysm. 
and then come back out into the next world. And so they've done this a number of times. It's in their oral tradition and their history. And you have a lot of that story type of story coming out of um, native peoples across this planet 12,000 ish years ago. The more so, I research this stuff, the more I realize what everybody thinks people are crazy for talking about is more likely to be true than more not. likely to be true. Right. Right. And so, like, hey, the Atlanteans or Lemurians or whoever you want to call them did the same thing. They did the same exact thing and they did it in Mount Shasta as well. Right. It's where we get into the whole idea of Lemurians living in Mount Shasta. And that leads us. Strangely enough, to our next topic that we're going to be talking about on our next episode, which is what the heck is going on at Mount Shasta? Like we've mentioned it a bunch of times in the show, but we're going to zero in on Mount Shasta, its potential relationship to Lemuria and why you should probably go there and visit and uh, and see what you find in. I don't know about that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to encourage you to do that, but what the heck? (laughs) It's a strange place. Let's talk about it. So uh, stay tuned for the next episode. John, thanks so much for being with us. And I hope you guys thought this episode was as out of this world as we did.